Some tech help or safety in the kitchen. Welcome back to Textination. I'm Fred Fishkin. Joining us from OM, O-M-E, is founder and CEO, Akshita Iyer. Hi, Akshita. Hey, Fred. It's great to be back, and thank you so much for having us. Well, great to see you again. Uh, you have a, a brand new edition of the OM Smart Knob to tell everyone about. Congratulations on that. But before we get into those details, let's talk a bit about the background of the company once again. Yeah, absolutely. A very, very personal story that led me down a bit of a different path. I thought I wasn't going to med school. And then here I am building kitchen technology. Uh, but it all started uh, almost, you know, eight years ago when my own mom, who was diagnosed with Parkinson's, accidentally left the stove on one too many times and started a kitchen fire. And it was a big realization for me. I just graduated from college. I never really talked to my parents about aging and especially now a parent with a disability. And I didn't realize how far behind the kitchen was in automation, especially safe automation in comparison to the rest of the smart home, right? And so at the time, I just really wanted to uh, build a solution that didn't exist for my own mom to continue to do the things that she loves every day while also allowing her to be safe and retain that independence. And I kind of just started there and I haven't looked back since. And you were, uh, if you look familiar to people who didn't see our first interview, you were on Shark Tank with the with the first Ohm Smart Knob back in 2021? No, it was 2018. Uh, oh, we were wow. on Shark Tank six months into the idea for this. And Fred, it wasn't even uh, Gen 1. It was like Gen point two. I mean, we we were just in the early stages of figuring out how to build a technology like this because a technology like this doesn't exist. And so I'm glad we were on the show. Uh, we were offered a deal, but we didn't take it. And thankful we didn't because it really gave me the push to go and figure out how you build a company, how you build technology with a team of people that actually understand, um, you know, both the hardware and the software. And, uh, you know, to get this far, uh, it's really just because of everyone I found after that experience. So, yeah. And then uh, I'll explain my confusion. 2021 is when you actually came out with the first edition? Yeah. So, like I said, we, you know, when I started, I was like, how hard could it be to build a smart device, right? It's like some plastics, motor, board, like can't be that complicated. And as we got further into it after Shark Tank, uh, realizing that this was actually a big problem we needed to solve, it's not as simple as you think to create not only a smart device, but one that needs to be intuitive and seamless and uh, one that needs to be compatible across so many makes and models of ranges and stovetops. And um, we were just scratching the surface back then of, you know, the um, the learnings and talking to customers. And then finally, years later, years of needed development and testing and iterating that we finally came out with Gen 1. Uh, and then we had a couple of years uh, getting feedback from our customers from Gen 1, which was great because then we really knew exactly how to redesign this so that it fit the needs of everyone and so that it was more accessible to everyone who needs it most. Really interesting. So you took you know, that feedback the hard here and got to work. So tell us about what you've changed, what is new here? Yeah, so with Gen 1, we had to limit, the biggest thing was we had to limit compatibility. Uh, we were using a lot of off-the-shelf parts just to get something to market, right? Just to make sure that this thing works and functions and people buy it. Uh, but we were cutting out a lot of stove tops where the knobs are closer together. And if you see our Gen 1 product, uh, I think which I showed on, on the last um, podcast, it, uh, it's a little bit bigger. Um, and so, you know, we were cutting out a lot of ranges. So the first thing was we needed to make sure that we could get the size down uh, and that we could create a product that could easily install on almost any gas or electric range or stovetop. So that was number one. Number two is installation was challenging for Gen 1. We did the best that we could uh, with the form factor and the parts that we had to make installation as easy as possible. But as I'm sure you know, a big problem with smart home devices is the installation part, right? That's where people get tripped up the most. And so we took all of the feedback from Gen 1 and the installation process to create a much, much easier setup uh, process for customers where it takes now a couple minutes where it used to take maybe 20 or 30 just because it was a little confusing and had a lot of parts. Um, 
it has a, a Gen 2 has a smaller, sleeker form factor. We also heard from customers um, who wanted to buy and maybe didn't because they love, people love the way that their kitchens look and they want to keep the aesthetics of their kitchen. And so we redesigned Gen 2 so that we have this stainless steel and um, black matte finish so that it could blend in with the aesthetic of any kitchen. And then finally, we have a longer battery life. Uh, the last thing we want is for people to be charging their knobs all the time. So we have up to four months of battery life with uh, normal cooking um, usage. And the, the thing about um, your burners is that you use uh, one or more, use one or two the most, right? Um, and so you are typically only charging one or two, uh, you know, once a quarter, uh, if not uh, even less than that. Well, step us through the installation and and the usage here, because there, there are a lot of different ways this can be of help. Yeah, absolutely. So in terms of installation, um, and, and we can share an installation video too, you pull your knob off, um, we have a bottom piece to the knob that goes right over the shaft, and then you just tighten it down so that it closes in on your shaft. Um, and then we have the top knob, which has all the electronics that just uh, through magnets just attaches to the bottom knob. And the beauty of that design is that when you have to charge the knob, all you have to do is take off the top of the knob. You leave the bottom on. You can use it like a normal knob. You can push. You can turn. With Gen 1, you had to uninstall the whole thing, which was not ideal. And so uh, we really made that installation and then maintenance of the knob so much easier. In terms of the use case now, I mean, it, it's still very similar to Gen 1. I think all of the core tech, uh, all the core technology and the core functionality applies to Gen 2. First and foremost, safety, the automatic shutoff, where after a certain period of time, uh, we, we ship the knob with a 15 minute auto shutoff default timer, which you can change based on your cooking habits. After that 15 minutes expires, if uh, you haven't changed the setting of the knob or let's say set a cooking timer, we'll send you a warning saying we're about to turn it off. If you wanna leave it on, you can. But then uh, when that timer expires, we will automatically and proactively turn the burner off for you so that that's one less thing you have to think about. And we're actually intervening before something can happen. Um, one of our other most used features is a cooking timer. Typically we're cooking the same things every day, right? Rice, pasta, tea, uh, boiled eggs. And what ends up happening oftentimes is you just get distracted for a couple extra minutes. And those couple extra minutes mean that something is overcooking or you have a potential for a cooking hazard. We also have what we call a safety lock, uh, which if you've heard recently in the news, there uh, is a big problem with ranges with accidental turn on of the burners, right? You accidentally hit it with you know, your hip or you have a dog or a cat that jumps onto the range and they accidentally turn the burner on. There was one a few weeks ago that CNN covered of a dog that jumped onto the range and started a kitchen fire. And this is becoming a really big problem and our technology actually um, prevents that. So if you, if you put your um, knobs in this safety mode, any time the knob is turned on, it will automatically turn itself off. Uh, so those are really the core features that we had in Gen 1 that we saw were so valuable and so impactful for our community. And we've kept those through Gen 2. And uh, there's the ability for voice control too, right? Yes, absolutely. Um, we know voice is going to play a huge part in our homes, especially when we're managing 10,000 different things at once. So we do have integration with Alexa and you can talk to your stove for the first time. You can set a timer. You can uh, turn the burners off from another room, uh, which we see is very beneficial, especially for busy parents or for people with disabilities. And we should point out, and it's important here, that you cannot use your phone or, or remotely turn the burner on. Yes, for safety reasons, uh, we have never allowed remote turn on of a burner. Um, so you have to push and turn. That way we know that you know your burner is on. After that, we can then proactively control or turn off. So yes, you're correct through our app um, or through Alexa or any other method, there's no way for anyone to remotely turn the burner on. And as you said, the default is 15 minutes. If it's left alone, it's gonna shut off. And for those who are wondering, well, what happens when I'm cooking that stew on the, on the stove that's gotta cook for an hour or two? or yeah. a pot of 
gravy as it as it's called as it's called in many Italian households. It yeah, has for a long time. Yeah, and the last thing we want to do is get in the way of your normal cooking routine, right? Um, we don't want to be obtrusive. The way you get around that is by either setting a cooking timer. So if you know that something has to sit for an hour on low, you can set that. Um, and then that cooking timer will override the automatic shutoff. You can also disable the automatic shutoff for a day. Uh, it will reset the next day because first and foremost, we're making sure that that safety layer is always there. But we do have these workarounds so that on the days where you need to cook something for longer, the automatic shutoff isn't getting in your way. Really terrific. So tell us about the, the real market for this. What's the, who are the customers that you're trying to reach first and foremost? Yeah, so with all the feedback um, and the you know testing we did with Gen 1, we really found a sweet spot with the sandwich generation, right? So middle-aged adults who have young kids at home, uh, they're cooking often, they're distracted, they've got kids that are turning the knobs on. But the interesting part of this demographic is that they also have aging family members. Over 14 million adults, I mean, you know this, in the US live alone. And over 90% of them want to stay in their own homes as they age. My parents are, are an example. And so it's the caregivers and the children that are concerned about activities of daily living like cooking that can um, be dangerous, especially as you know there's any kind of cognitive decline. And so we're really targeting our you know, OM 2.0 marketing efforts towards um, older adults and their caregivers and family members, because we really see that this is a huge unmet need, both for consumers, but then also for property managers, right? You think all of these multi-unit buildings like senior living communities, where not only is there a risk mitigation piece, right? They don't want to have a cooking related um, fire uh, in a big building. Uh, in fact, over 70% of multi-unit building fires are caused by unattended cooking. Um, so we have a market there too. And what's interesting, what we've been able to do is actually harness all of the data from a smart device like ours. So you can imagine every time you turn a burner on, we know which burner you're using. We know how long you're using it for. Um, we know what setting it's at. Um, and we also know how many times it auto shut offs. And so we can actually compile all of that data into uh, a report that allows a caregiver or a clinical care team at a senior living community to be able to unobtrusively assess someone's well-being, right? So, um, you know, Fred usually cooks every weekday morning. All of a sudden, you don't cook for a few days. That can be a trigger for us to alert the relevant party to say, hey, maybe something's wrong. Or if all of a sudden the automatic shutoff engages more, that can be another data point uh, around someone's cognitive health. And so we're really excited about the applications of data that are that's coming from a smart device like this. That's not a camera. It's it's all it's doing it's uh, is is uh, capturing what your cooking activity looks like. And so there's a lot of there are a lot of applications there that we're excited about. And can an an older adult or a family decide that this information is going to be shared with a, oh. with a, a daughter or son or another caregiver? Absolutely. So with all the senior living communities that we're partnering with, uh, we always, always, always get permission from the family members and the resident, uh, not only about installing this technology, but also about capturing that information, that information and sharing it. And there's no camera involved here. Is there a subscription model at all? No camera involved. Um, and for consumers, there is no subscription. Uh, for the user, there is no subscription where we do have um, subscription coming into play is for these property managers. Um, so these multi-unit buildings, uh, the companies that own them, because there are insurance applications. Um, there's a, a lot of this data can be used to help get a property discount on their insurance policy. So that is where we see opportunity to add software layers and that subscription. But the last thing we know that consumers want is another subscription. And I and the OM team fundamentally believe that nobody should have to pay a recurring fee for safety. That should be inbuilt into every appliance. And we hope that eventually OM is built into every appliance that is sold. 
what is your real competition here? I know there, there are some other companies looking at the you know, safety of, of, uh, of the ranges as well. And maybe some of the new, some of the companies are coming out with this kind of technology being built in. Yeah. So we don't have uh, any company that is creating a, or that has created a smart knob with the proactive control that we have. Um, I think our biggest competition, honestly, is what you just said, is uh, an appliance manufacturer building this in. What we know, though, is that there are tens of millions of households that have ranges that are, quote unquote, dumb or not smart. Right. And unless your appliance breaks or unless you're building a new home or you're renovating, the chances of you spending um, significant amount of money to buy a new range is very low. That's where we see our opportunity is we can get into the home today and actually understand how people are using this technology, how they're using their appliance, and then use that to build a better appliance. Um, and so. Yes, there's always competition for technologies like this, but we really see that our first mover advantage is is very beneficial because we can just react more quickly. And as a startup, uh, we're super agile. So, uh, you know, if if anyone does come out with it, um, I think, you know, we still have a presence and a market that is huge. Terrific. So tell us about pricing and availability. Yeah, so um, you can find or you can place an order for Ohm 2.0 on our website. Um, and in terms of availability, um, for orders that are placed today within the next few weeks, we'll ship within the next two to four weeks. Um, orders placed after that, we hope that we can keep that timeline up. We're getting product um, made and inventory built um, as we speak. You know, manufacturing uh, and supply chain is another beast of its own, but fortunately, we've got a great manufacturing partner uh, that has helped with this. And in terms of pricing, we're able to offer Gen 2 at a much uh, lower price than Gen 1. So it's $129 a knob, but then with each knob you add, you get a discount. And then over the next few weeks or months, we will be running uh, um, more discounts and more savings, especially for our community uh, of supporters who have been following us for so long. Terrific. Well, congratulations so much on the innovations. The website is Ohm Kitchen, O M E Kitchen.com. Akshita, thank you so much for spending time with us. Yeah, thanks, Fred. Always a pleasure to be here.